ever since I found out about the Paradox Pokemon. There's a challenge I kind of set myself and I really wanted to get it done. So I decided a couple of days ago that I was going to actually do it. I wanted to find every single Scarlet exclusive Paradox Pokemon as a shiny in one stream. And it took me just over four hours, but I did it. And this is the journey of getting that done. I need five Herbal Mysticus. At most, I'll need 14. Um, that's not factoring in any random shinies I might come across um, while I'm down there. But I've got 15 Herbal Mysticus, so in theory, I've got enough um, to shiny hunt all of them. First, I needed to pick a first target. I decided to go with Slitherwing, which is a bug and fighting type, and decided the fight was probably the best type to go for. So I made myself a fighting sandwich and headed into Area Zero. It wasn't long before I found my first shiny, but unfortunately it wasn't Slitherwing. So people just like, are you serious? I ended up finding a shiny Halucha, which up until a few days before that would have been one of my most anticipated shinies of the game. Uh, but I did end up doing a Halucha hunt a few days earlier. I set myself the goal that if I didn't find the shiny Slitherwing in this run, I was going to reset over the shiny Halucha. The pressure was on. I had to try and find a shiny Slitherwing somewhere. I found a good clearing where a lot of Slitherwings were spawning. But unfortunately, the 30 minutes ticked down and I didn't find a shiny Slitherwing. So I had to reset without saving over that Halucha. In the choice between a shiny I already had and wasted Herb and Mystica, I chose not to waste my Herb and Mystica. Next, I decided to switch targets and move on to the Fairy type sandwich to try and hunt for Screamtail and Fluttermane in one run. I had just enough Herb Mystica to do every single hunt without doubling them up, so I thought that doubling them up might be able to save me some Herb Mystica. There's a shiny. Didn't save it. Alright, so there's the shiny Scream Tail. I want it in a Dream Ball, but I really don't think it's going to catch. It took about 15 minutes, but up at the top of the cave, right at the entrance, I ended up finding myself a shiny Screamtail. And then I headed down to the bottom of the cave to try and find a Fluttermane, but the 30 minutes ticked down and I didn't have a Fluttermane. However, I did have Screamtail, so things were looking up and I had my first shiny of this challenge. Next, I decided to make another fighting type sandwich to try and reclaim Slitherwing, and I ended up doing it two minutes after entering Area Zero. So, if this shiny hunt goes perfectly... <laughs> um... And I do find the Slitherwing quick. Then Great Tusk will be the next thing on my on my agenda. And then, if I find that fast, it'll be poor me. And then if I find that fast, I'm just going to crown myself the King, King of All Shinies. Because, yeah. At that point, I might as well just, just you know... Become the king of shiny hunting. I don't know. I think no one would be able to argue with me, to be fair. Damn, there's a load of Slitherwings here. This is definitely the spot. This is 100% the spot. Is that it? Oh my god! Well, that was fast. remember to save it this time. Well, that was quick. Shiny Slitherwing in what has to be less than five minutes. Went through the entire 30 minutes and didn't find a single one. All right, critical capture, there we go. Okay, so that's Screamtail Court, Slitherwing Court. I'm going to keep a lookout for other shinies before I do something crazy. And now I can look at the Pormies and stuff because I will be saving it. In fact, I should have already saved it by now. Screamtail, Slitherwing, two shinies caught today on stream. Now to do something crazy. With so much time left on my sandwich, I decided to also double up this hunt and go down for Great Tusk, which I ended up finding within three minutes of entering the cave in Area Zero. Right here. <laughs> Shiny number three of the stream. I ain't messing around. Quick ball it. 
Oh, nice critical capture. Things were looking really good for me, so I decided to just run around Area Zero and see what other fighting types I could find. My eyes were actually on Flamigo, but I ended up finding the Shiny Pormy about three minutes after I found the Great Tusk. So, if this Shiny Hunt goes perfectly, <laughs> um, and I do find the Slitherwing quick, then Great Tusk will be the next thing on my, on my agenda. And then, if I find that fast, it'll be poor me. I don't know if I find that fast, I'm just going to crown myself the king of, king of all shinies, because, yeah, no one would be able to argue with me, to be fair. with three shinies from that sandwich power, with two of them being Paradox Pokemon. So by this point, I've managed to tick off Screamtail, Slitherwing, and Great Tusk in just two sandwiches. So things were looking pretty good at this point. After a couple of failed attempts to try and make one, I ended up making an electric type sandwich and ran down into area zero to try and find Sandy Sharks. This hunt stressed me out. Sandy Sharks is actually a pretty subtle shiny change. So when you add in the fact that it's in one of the most sunlit areas of the game, it's pretty dress worthy. I actually couldn't see the shiny was shiny based on its body. I had to go to Cerebi and have a look and saw that the legs were black. So that's what I was using as my reference point. I ended up finding the Sandy Sharks about 10 minutes after getting into area zero. Like, that's gotta be the shiny. See what, I, I can't see that as different. That doesn't look different to me than the, than the, than the regular one. That's so weird. So I've, I've caught it now anyway. So we've got the shiny sandy sharks. I can kind of see. Now it looks a lot, in the Pokedex it looks a lot more, a lot less. I can see the difference a lot more there than I could like in, in the sunlight. I then ran around area zero trying to find another electric type. I think Belly Bolt and Tad Bulb were actually on my target list at this point, but I ended up finding another shiny for me about 10 minutes after the shiny Sandy Shark. So now I had the entire evolution line as I did also find another shiny for me in another video that's up on the channel. At this point, about two and a half hours into the stream, I've managed to tick off Screamtail, Slitherwing, Great Tusk, and Sandy Sharks. Now it was time for the big one. The one that really made me question whether this challenge was actually possible. My favourite shiny of all of the Paradox Pokemon, and the rarest one, hardest to get, Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon is only found in one cave in Area Zero, a cave which it shares with Dino and Zvilus and Gibble and Gabite. So Dark type sandwiches and Dragon type sandwiches weren't going to only give me Roaring Moon. So the pressure was on to try and find a Roaring Moon. On my first run round, I ended up finding two shinies Vilus, which I opted not to catch because of how hard it was going to be to find Roaring Moon. I didn't want to waste shiny hunting time on shinies that I was probably going to have to reset over like the whole Lucha earlier in the stream. However, towards the end of the sparkling power, something happened that I did not expect that forced me to save the game anyway and waste some more Herba Mystica. That was finding a shiny Houndstone, which wasn't even boosted. So I had to head out the cave after the sandwich power was done, save the game, make another dragon type sandwich, and head back in there. For God's sake. I found another shiny Zvilus, which I again opted not to catch, knowing that this was going to be one of the hardest hunts and probably wasn't even going to happen today. However, in hindsight, I probably should have. Because this happened. <gasps> Oh my god! I didn't save it, oh my god! I'm gonna cry! Oh my god! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fuck yes! Oh my god, I fucking found it! Oh yes! I ended up finding the Roaring Moon after about an hour of searching with all three of those hunts combined. And then... This happened. 
Give me the critical patch. Yes, there it is. You know what? I don't even care about you. <laughs> As if it was just waiting there, like, my turn. Not your turn, you're not green. Now save it, save it, save it, save it! <laughs> oh my god. I wasn't, just wasn't expect. I'd, I'd completely zoned out because of how... What? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> My energy for this challenge was reinvigorated at this point because the hardest shiny out of all of these to get was now in my possession. Roaring Moon was the one that was going to stop this from happening and at this point I only needed two Paradox Pokemon as shinies and both of them are found in abundance and that really helped out when I moved on to the next hunt, which was Brute Bunny. After making a dark type sandwich, I headed back into area zero, and I found a shiny Brute Bunny within three minutes of heading down there. Oh my god, that was fast. I think we're all risking this. I want it in a grey ball. My reaction to Roaring Moon. Pure joy. That's why we show you on that feeling. That feeling. Sure, they're not all like that. Not every time you find a shiny, you're going to react that way. But there's always a shiny. There's always a shiny that will make you react that way. That's your brew bunny. It was cool. Might as well look for Zvilus. Actually, you know what? Should I go back in the cave? There's, a, there's always that small chance that I could find another shiny Roaring Moon. I decided to try and find the shiny Bishop or pointing it at Fury Falls to try and make up the rest of the sandwich power time, but I didn't end up finding any of those. I still had about 25 minutes left on the sandwich by the time I got there, so I still didn't find any one of those two shinies there. However, at this point, I've now got every single Paradox Pokemon except for Fluttermane. So when my Dark Power Sandwich wore off, it was time to make a Ghost Type Sandwich and back into Area Zero. Fluttermane was all over these caves, and it was only a matter of time before I found one, and sure enough, there's one. There's the shiny. I didn't say it before I encountered it. That's fine. That really didn't take long. Shiny Fluttermane. I set myself the goal. Catch every past Paradox Pokemon in one stream. I've done it. <laughs> I mean, I still got to catch this yet. Thought I had it then. I probably shouldn't do too much. Mm. That came way too close for my liking. There we go. I have now officially caught every single past Paradox Pokemon in one stream. Great Tusk, Slitherwing, Sandy Sharks, Roaring Moon, Flutter, uh, Fluttermane, Screamtail, and Brute Bonnet. All in one stream. I set myself the challenge and I did it. This challenge was on my mind to do ever since finishing the main story. And so I decided the other day to just go for it. Stuck enough Herbal Mystica to make every type of sandwich needed. And eventually, there was only about three hours between catching the first Paradox Pokemon and the last Paradox Pokemon. But in the end, I caught all seven of them. So if you have enjoyed this video and want to see me do more videos like this, I'm planning on doing the same challenge for Pokemon Violet when I've got my save file for that up and running. I've got Herbal Mysticas and the Shiny Charm. Uh, please do hit the follow button here on YouTube. As a small time YouTuber, any and all support is greatly appreciated. All of my streams are permanently archived on a schedule. And also head on over to twitch.tv forward slash James and Thunder and follow me on there. This is where this was originally streamed. So if you want to see me do stuff like this live, 
it's worth going over there and hitting follow. I've been James of the Thunder, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.